Today, I'm going to show you how to change out a damaged cord on this Black & Decker 1 horsepower circular saw. This saw has been around for a long time, and it's the first circular saw I ever bought. I believe I bought this back in the 70s, early 70s. It's a 7.5 quarter circular saw. It's 120 volts, 9 amps, and I can read here. I can't read what I can't read what this is saying over here. Maybe you could pick it up better than I can. But this saw I had from the 70s. I've used it quite a bit. You can see it's been pretty beat up. And it's not a trash or treasure. This was an actual purchase back in the 70s. Now, this has been damaged like this for quite some time. And I do have a nick in it over here. And this wire is pretty stiff. Like I said, it's from the 70s. It's been around a long time. What it's mostly used for now is just if I have to make a quick cut on something or when I'm disassembling pallets. Sometimes instead of breaking the pallets apart, depending on how they're put together, I just cut the ends off. But I want to replace this cord, and I'm going to show you how I'm doing it at no expense. I picked up this cord off an air condition when I went to the local recycle center. It's flexible, it's got the three prongs, so it has all three wires, it has the ground, and I'm gonna take the saw apart and put this wire in. Now the first thing I had to do was get the crud out of these holes. If the camera's picking this up, they're Phillip head screws. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five on the bottom here, five, six, there you go, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's two under here. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave these in until I start pulling it apart. I'm not sure if they're holding something on on the inside or if it's holding it together. But before I pull this apart, I have to take off this piece here. So I'm gonna remove this wing nut and the wing nut over here to get the guide plate off. This saw has been used and abused over the last 30 years. How it held up all this time, I don't know. But it did. Years back, a lot of the tools I bought were either Craftsman or Black & Decker. This is one of the survivors. You see this wing nut sort of its better days. I'm just taking this one off here. This could stay on because when this splits, this will stay on this side. All right. Let's see what we have here now. Hoping I didn't strip that one out in there. Sometimes when you cut in this wood, especially the pallet wood, it might be a little damp. It has a little moisture in it from being outside and the uh, sawdust will really stick to it. Okay, these are all the same size, so I don't have to worry about how they go in. This one here. There we go. And you can see that was stripping out a little bit. Now you could go and buy a length of cord and put a plug on the end of it. And if you use your saw often, or you're a roofer and you know, you're working on heights, instead of running an extension cord, you could run a long cord, 40, 50 feet, just get the right gauge cord, and you won't have to run an extension cord. Even though that would be useful for me at times, if I start putting all long cords on all the equipment I have, I just don't have the room to store it all. So it's just easier for me to run an extension cord and go that direction. I was thinking about that, especially when I'm working on the pallets. But while I'm working on the pallets, I um, have other tools I'm using also when I'm out there, because generally it's not just the pallets. No reason why you couldn't run a 25-foot cord on this or... 50 foot cord 
like I say, you just have to have the right gauge wire because you're running that long cord. Same as if you had an extension cord, it has to be the right gauge to run that long. Before I go any further, I want to take this blade off. This requires a half inch wrench on this model. Should have did that first. Blade out of here. There's also a screw up in this handle. Well, nothing's moving. Taking these two out. This screw right here, I couldn't get out. It's stripped. The very last one. So what I'm going to do is just drill this out and try not to damage the uh, casing. I'll be one screw short. I'll have to find a screw to go in. I'll probably leave one of these other ones out over here. But this screw right here, I'm going to have to drill this out. I'm back. That screw was deep enough where a drill bit wouldn't reach. So it went off angle. And what I ended up using was a chisel to get the head down a little bit. And it was just a little bit left where I couldn't get it. And you can see that that hole is bigger than the screw. So that's what I had to do to uh, loosen it up. Now we're back to uh, disassembling the saw to get to that wire. Sometimes a simple job turns out to be just a little bit more than what you wanted it to be. Anyway, we're splitting this apart now. I don't think I have to take this apart. We'll see. It's coming loose now. A lot of sawdust falling out of there. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is what I'm looking at right now. See this armature, the rust that's on there? While I'm in here, I'm going to clean this all up. Okay, I'm going to blow this all out. I'm going to sand this down a little. And clean up over here and check these brushes while I'm in there having a hard time positioning this camera where you can see what I'm doing all right the spring over here has to be disconnected that's simple enough that's off That's it. This is the inside of the store. 30 something years. Really not all that bad. This doesn't look good. What happened here? That looks like one of the brushes, which should be where? Let's see. Was the other brush? This one. Okay, I'm going to have to play around a little bit in here because it all came apart. There's the bearing. This would go back in here. Okay, there's there's the other brush. Okay, so here's the two brushes. They're really not that worn. For the amount of times I used the saw, kind of surprised. There's the two brushes, the bearing, and here's the wire that this all came apart for. I say, okay, here's for the brushes. The brushes would go in here, looks like it mounts in there. Oh, let's see. The wire that comes in is the ground. It's the black, the white. It looks like this wire is part of the switch. Normally, there should be a screw 
where you can unscrew it, pull it out and put another one in. So what I'm going to have to do over here, I'm going to cut this wire on this white wire. Maybe I'm better off just taping this up and calling it a day. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cut these wires and then splice them in there. I'm going to tape them and use heat shrink. And But first I'm going to clean this all out. I'm going to do this all off camera. Here's that screw I couldn't get out. This one screw was holding us up. I think it was just the uh, dust that was in there. And when I uh, shred, when I uh, shared it, that was the end of it. But kind of, I'm even going to take this out. I'm going to put fresh grease in here. Clean all this dust out. Vacuum this all out. Uh, make sure I get all the parts off before I do any vacuuming. And everything looks pretty good. I thought I would see more wear in here. I would, you know, on a saw like this, uh, oof, what's it, 30, 20, say 75, 1975. I might have bought this saw in 73 or 74. Uh, back then I used it hit and miss. You know, if I did an occasional job, I, I used to... Uh, renovate stores and I, I took a saw like this on the job because things have a tendency of walking away but nobody ever walked away with my black and decker amazing huh but anyway I, I would use it then it wouldn't be used for a few months and I would use it when it got used it got used pretty heavy so that's why I'm surprised I don't see more wear in here not complaining I'm pleasantly surprised I want to see if I could reuse this so when we go through it protects the wire I'm going to do this all off camera. The wire I'm replacing it with, like I mentioned in the beginning, is off of uh, an air condition. It looks like it'll be okay without any problems. I'm going, to I'm going to check it against this wire before I cut anything up. Because if this wire is too thin, I'll go out and I'll, I'll buy a piece of wire and just put a plug on the end of it. I'm getting off camera for now. And once I have this cleaned up and put it back together and get these brushes in and we grease this, sand this down, clean this all up. I'll be back to show you whether it works or not. It was working before I took it apart. I hope it works when I put it back together. Yeah, what do they say? In for a penny, in for a pound. I started cleaning this up on the inside, and I have to scrape this out of here. I thought it would just come out with like a soft brush. But I'm going to have to get a, I'm using a screwdriver and a soft brush. I'm going to go to a brass brush to get this out. But this grease is pretty caked up. And this grease in here is caked up and it's got um, sawdust in there. So to get this gear out, I'm going to pull this piece out. And there's two screws over here. You couldn't see them before with all the sawdust. But I'm going to take this off, clean this up over here, pack it with grease, put it back in. I was going to take this uh, guide plate off and paint it. I figure after 30 years it deserves a little paint job. I'm having the hardest time getting this little roll pin out over here. I could grind that down and push it through with a punch, but I don't want this uh, going longer than I have to. So if everything works right, I can always take this off at a later date and uh, paint it up. I figure it just look nice. In here, I'm going to clean up this. The brushes look like they were in good shape. You have a bearing here. The bearing for here is in the tray with the other screws and a couple of nuts and washers. I'm going to get back to taking this apart, packing the grease, nothing exciting to watch. Once I put it together, unless I find something out of the ordinary or something I should point out, I won't be showing the reassemble. It's just putting everything back the way I took it apart. I'll be missing one screw when I do put it back together, and this will all be cleaned out in here. If the camera's picking that up. I have all this cleaned out. This will be re-greased. And one thing I did notice, remember I said that these things normally screw in and out? Well, I was trying to get that pin out. One of these wires came out and they look like they're pressed in, but I don't want to pull the rest of them out just in case this came out and I'm going to have trouble getting it back in there the right way. So let me get back to this. And when I have it together, we'll plug it in, see if she runs and we'll either have success or this will be a, an epic fail. I already had one of those. I'm not looking for another. Okay, until later. Now, I want to clean this up over here. And normally, I would just rub some sandpaper around it. Make sure you clean it off really well. Blow it off. You don't want anything stuck back in there. 
today I'm going to try something a little different. I cut a piece of sandpaper a little thinner than this width. Get yourself a block of wood so this fan doesn't hit the table. And while it's turning, I'm going to hold that sandpaper over there. I'm not going to turn it fast. And also, I had to be careful not to damage the shaft because that's the going to bearing. I tried it on this side, but it wobbled. I don't have a way right now to video this and do it at the same time. So I'm going to clean it and show you what it looks like when it's done. Now that's some difference. Sorry about the flick. You can see the difference on it now. Didn't take long, a couple seconds. Plus, I cleaned this up a little bit on this side. There was a little bit of rust on here. I found the best way to do this was to hold the sandpaper with my thumb. Low speed. Didn't take any time or pressure at all. Cleaned it right up. What a nice job. Now to get this back together. I'm back, and the good news is I got it all back together. I have to tell you, though, this was more of a project than I thought it would be. <clears throat> that said, I was able to save this boot to put the uh, new wire in. And when I tried to get the old wire out, I made the mistake of slicing it, thinking that that would work. The wire was able to cut the the copper wire was able to come out, but the plastic sheeting was glued in there. I had some time getting this out. I used it. I had it. I ended up using a drill bit that I just stuck in the vise and I turned this around with a pair of pliers until I was able to get it out. So it's all back together. Now, in a moment of truth, let's plug it in and see if it works. This cord is a little longer than the original cord. See, I don't have the blade on. And let's see what happens now. It's a go. Let's get the blade on this and go cut some wood. Okay, well, so far we have it that it's put together. It works. I didn't get electrocuted when I started it up. Let's see how I cut some wood. I'm going to use a couple of pieces of pallet wood over here because this is what I generally use it for. Now, this wood's a little damp, so I might have a little resistance. But let's see. Let's see. Okay, with the small piece. Now this is one of the rails on the pallets. You see how it cuts this. Let's see. So, as you can see, no issues. Now, if you want to go online, if you happen to have this saw and you can't read the numbers off it, it's model 7301. 7301. If you Google Black & Decker 7301, you'll get a schematic of the saw, but you'll find a lot of parts, such as the cord, are discontinued. You can no longer get them. You can just buy a regular cord and put a plug at the end of it, but the theme of my channel is Reclaim, repair, reuse, and recycle. So in this particular case, it was a repair and a recycle. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, give it a like, share it with someone else. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and be sure to hit that notification bell to get my new videos as I upload them. And if you would care to help support the channel even more, if you go to the links that I have below and order through my Amazon affiliate link, on some of these items, I get a small commission coming back, and it's no additional cost to you. If you don't have Amazon already, I do have a link where you could try Amazon free for the first 30 days. 
If you decide to keep it, you pay afterwards. If you decide not to keep it, you just cancel it out with no fee. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay safe.